Eight years ago, I became my husband's caregiver. He was diagnosed with CLL and SLL. He was good for so many years and then he trapped. And so nothing changed until he then needed chemo. And then life really stood still for us at the point that he needed chemo. I basically stayed it aside. My husband Skip was diagnosed uh, five and a half years ago with a large B cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And at that point, I became a caregiver, and I like that term. I think it's endearing. I was recently involved in a support group, and I looked over at the wife of one of the patients, and I asked how she was doing with everything, and she started crying. And I, I didn't really know how to react to that at first, and I asked her why she was crying, and she said, because it's not about me, and nobody ever asks me how I'm doing. It's always about him. I remember the first time someone asked me, we were at the farmer's market, and I was just so thrilled that someone finally asked me about me because I was trying to hold it all together for my husband. And it was just such a good feeling to be recognized. Not that I needed a pat on the back, but I, I just was really happy someone thought to ask me how I was doing. And I think there's a difference between you know a pat on the back and recognition. Um, what I most remember is when we first started the process, you know, you're, you're, you're in it wholeheartedly and getting through the process, building a support system. Early on, I felt really good and in control. And as the challenges build, in my case, the caregiver role has really increased. When my husband was diagnosed eight years ago, everything was really primarily focused on Larry. You know, everyone else who would see me would start out with, so how's Larry? And then I would tell them, and then it was like, okay, you know, and they'd walk away. I was very lucky to have, you know, a few friends who would spend time with me every single day when things were intense and listen. It was my son that was diagnosed with leukemia, and he was five. We have an older son who was eight at the time. And as a parent, you're already a caregiver, right? That's, right. that's your role. Well, when you're taking care of a child with cancer, your caregiver role changes. You know, you know how to be a mom, you know how to be a dad, but all of a sudden your child has cancer, you've got to learn. We had all of our friends saying, oh my God, you guys are handling this so well. And we look at them and go, do we have a choice? So there's all these layers that you're having to deal with. And as a parent, you kind of become the, not the focus per se, but what all the information channels through. And so that again, you get the, how's this going, what's going on? And it's the, not what can we do to help you get through this? You have to ask for what you need. And it's, it got hard because I'm not good at asking for help. I think asking, is, asking for help is, is a real good point or being, having it be difficult to ask for help. But then I had a neighbor who once a week would cook chickens. She'd put a whole chicken on the barbecue and she would say to me, Sharon, put a chicken on the barbecue today. Would you like one? I never had to ask. It was just something that she did for me. And I, I have to say that if for caregivers, if you could find someone who could just anticipate a need and take care of it, it's, it's the greatest gift. It's the not having to ask. Exactly. But a lot of people, they want to help, but they don't know what you need. One of the things that really worked for us when uh, Anita was going through a transplant was we had time to repair. And one, I think it really helps if you get onto a website where you can share your experiences. And then it's also a way to let people know um, what your needs are or th that you've got things covered. Assigning roles really helps. That worked for us too, assigning roles. People would call and we'd say, okay, would someone be a researcher? Would someone go online and read about what Skip had? And don't tell unless we ask you. And I had um, someone who said, Shirley, I know you you love to have flowers on your steps going up to your house and you don't have time to, do, to plant anything, so he took care of that. And so there were, it was really good to have something to offer people when they said, what can I do to help? So what do you guys do to take care of yourself in, amidst all of that's going on with 
your family because we know you can't take care of someone else. You know this as a nurse. Yes. You can't take a care of someone else if you can't take care of yourself. So how do you take care of yourselves? Well, in my case, um, actually got into running as a catharsis. When we were going through the transplant, one of the nurses at the infusion center told us about team and training. I didn't, I didn't know about it and said, oh yeah, we raise money for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And then um, our youngest daughter said, mom, dad, I just signed up to run the Nike Women's Marathon, half marathon in San Francisco. In my being naive, I said, well, next year I'm gonna run the full marathon. <laughs> and we've been a running family ever since. Sharon and I would walk a lot. We've walked around the park for I don't know how many miles, but um, it was really good to be able to share our stories together and really to have someone to listen to. One of the things I did for myself to try to get through that time, not only sometimes talking to friends, but I started to write haikus. Oftentimes during the day I would just write some haikus and sometimes at night when I couldn't sleep what helped me instead of counting sheep get to bed was I wrote a haiku. So it's whatever way you as a caregiver you have to acknowledge your emotions and what's happening and they don't all have to be altruistic. You can be mad, you can be pissed off, you can be scared to death, you can be anything you're feeling. but. People expect you to be all chipper and happy and things are great and oh, we're doing so well and we're gonna be just gonna beat this thing, but you don't always feel that way. And being able to have a pl safe place to say that to a friend, to a journal, to a blog or something like that is really important.